Welcome to this lecture on chemical curiosities. I'm going to start with the liquid in this container and I'll just pour some into this cylinder. So you can see it's a nice bright red colour. Let's see what happens if I keep pouring. Well, I think you can see every time I pour out the liquid, I seem to get a different colour. So, in the dictionary, the word curious is defined to mean something which is puzzling or surprising or unexpected. And this demonstration might seem rather puzzling at first, until we realised that the cylinders were not empty at the start. Each of them had a little uh, speck of chemical which reacted with the liquid in this container and it produced a colour change. Um, we'll look at the chemistry of that in just a moment. Let's have a look at the liquid in these two beakers. They're both colourless. But let's see what happens when I pour the liquid from this beaker into this one. So, again we see a colour change. It's turning blue. The blue is getting darker. But as I keep pouring, <laughs> it goes away again. That's also rather odd. It seems as if a chemical reaction began and produced a colour change, and then it sort of changed its mind and went backwards. So did it go backwards? Did that chemical reaction go backwards? So the chemistry of these demonstrations is based on a simple idea, which is that every substance can be thought of as either an acid or an alkali. And if it's neither, if it's sort of in the middle, we say that it's neutral. Now, we can use certain substances to tell us whether a material is acid or alkali, and probably one of the most famous of these is called litmus. So litmus is a material which is red in acid conditions and it's blue in alkali conditions. But there are lots of other indicators, and the one we used in this experiment was called universal indicator. So this has a range of different colours. It's red when things are strongly acidic. Uh, in the middle, where things are neutral, it's green. And in strongly alkali conditions, it's purple. And this experiment was based on an indicator called thymol phthalene, which is colourless in acid and it's blue in alkali conditions. So these cylinders had different amounts of acid and alkali in them, producing the various different colours. In this experiment, the first beaker had a mixture of thymol phthalene and some acid, and the second beaker had some alkali. And the key to this is that when acid mixes with alkali, they react to produce a salt plus water. So they're sort of opposites, they kind of cancel each other out. So as I started to pour the liquid, the acid and thymol phthalene from here went into the alkali, but the alkali quickly cancelled out the acid, so the thymol phthalene is now an alkaline solution and it turns blue. But as I keep on pouring, I'm adding more and more acid, it's neutralising the alkali, and eventually this beaker becomes acid as well, and the thymol phthalene goes back to being colourless. So this reaction was not going backwards, it was just the same reaction all along. We could ask, is there a chemical reaction that goes backwards? Can chemical reactions go backwards at all? Well, that turns out to be a really interesting question, and it's a question that we're going to come back to several times during the course of this lecture. But let me just show you now another example of a reaction involving universal indicator, and it's this column of water which has universal indicator and also a little bit of sodium hydroxide, which is alkaline, and so it's turned it this sort of bluey purple colour. And we're going to add some acid, and we should see it go through a sequence of colours rather like these. Now the particular acid that I'm going to use is acid that's going to be made in the water from carbon dioxide. So in this beaker I have carbon dioxide but it's frozen, it's at minus 79 degrees centigrade and it's become a solid, we call this dry ice. Because when it warms up it doesn't melt to a liquid, it goes straight to a gas, so it's always dry. So when I add the dry ice to the water, it will react with the water to form an acid called carbonic acid. That's the same stuff that's in fizzy drinks, that's what gives the fizzy drinks their fizz. So let's see what happens when I, when I add this. Now watch for the colour changes. You should see that sequence of different colours. Okay. So in all the reactions we've seen so far, we mixed two things together, it produced a chemical reaction which gave rise to a colour change.